Good morning guys. How are you this morning? So I'm sorry I'm late, but it seems that I thought I was recording and I actually wasn't <laughs> because I've switched over to the Facebook feed now. So I apologize for being a few minutes late. I was in here talking to you guys, but you weren't there. So now let's get started with our pledges. A couple of announcements. Make sure you're telling your friends that we are um, not streaming live on YouTube in the mornings. We're just streaming live on Facebook. That's where the most of you are watching. And so I want to make sure we're just doing one feed so it's really a good picture and good sound. Um, but I need you to help me out and let your friends know if they're watching on YouTube, it won't be live at 9. It's just going to be live on Facebook. And then I will upload the video as soon as chapel is um, done. And I'll upload it to the YouTube channel, the church's YouTube channel, so they can watch it there anytime. Um, but it seems that it's better for most of my friends to be able to watch it on Facebook um, live and then to be able to watch on YouTube anytime. So get the word out to your friends. I still want to put it on YouTube because for maybe your friends down the street, maybe I don't know their moms and so they're not friends with me on Facebook. And I don't want them to miss the opportunity to watch our classroom time and our fun that we have. So make sure you're telling them our videos are on the church, Cape Carter Baptist Church YouTube channel. They can like and subscribe so they're notified when our videos post. Um, but we will be streaming live here every morning. All right? Good job. Make sure you let me know if you're out there. Again, I'm sorry I was late. I was in here just doing chapel and I looked over and realized it wasn't streaming. So... Sorry about that, guys. But we're here now, so let's do our pledges. Everybody standing nice and tall. Nice and tall. Shoulders back. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very nice. And now for our Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Good job. Now for our Bible. Bible, Bible. Here we go. Attention, salute, Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Good job. Now, if you guys see me turn and look this way ever so often, it's because I'm looking to see who's commenting. Like, hey, Miss Maudie. Miss Maudie's over there. I see her comment. So, all of my setup is over there, so I do have to look over to the side sometimes. So, sorry if that's a distraction. But I want to make sure you're out there. All right. How about get that Bible on your shoulder and let's sing. Are you ready? The, come on. <coughs> Clear your throats. Come on. The, get those frogs out. <coughs> the, come on. Please don't let me be singing this by myself. The, B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Spells Bible! Good job, guys. How about this is the day? Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Woohoo! We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Good job, guys. Good job. How about, let me see your Jesus fingers. Come on. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good job. Good job. Now, um, 
Hey, so I'm so tickled I got to see some of you at church yesterday morning. Um, get the word out. Kids ministry is open. We're having classrooms. Just need you guys to pre-register. So I know that you're going to be there. Um, but come on out and join us on Sunday morning. We're having lots of fun down in the children's wing. Students are meeting upstairs too. So um, come on and join us. Um, and for those of you that were streaming yesterday, thank you. So glad to know that you guys were out there worshiping in your homes. And one of the things I encourage people to do is, hey, if you are worshiping at home, listen, I don't care how young you are, invite your friends to come watch service with you in your home. Have home church. Invite your friends. This is a big old mission field out there. And do you have some neighbors right now? I, I'm pretty sure you do. You have neighbors right now, some who don't even know who Jesus is, some who do not have a personal relationship with him, and some who are not going to church anywhere. And so I encourage you, if you're streaming at home, watching watching on Facebook or on YouTube, I mean, if you're watching services, Sunday morning services on YouTube, then invite your friends to come over and watch with you and have home church. It'd be a lot of fun. And you, you'd be able to have some great discussions after the service was over. So great, great opportunity to reach other people for, for Jesus. So be his hands and feet. All right, so let's see. What's another song? Can we do the Bible book bop? Ba, 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 Bible books. Ba, 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 Bible books. Do the Bible book bop. Ba, Bible books. Do the Bible book bop. Ba, Bible books. Gonna learn all the books from the bottom to the top and do the Bible book bop. Ba, Bible books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Do the bop, 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 bop. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. We'll do the bop. Ba, ba, ba. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles makes me wanna sing. And do the ba, 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 ba. Do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books. Do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books. If you learn this song, you'll impress your mom and pops. So do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Do the ba, ba. Ba, ba, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, do the ba, 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 Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Mike, and Nahum, do the ba, 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 do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books, do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books, gonna soak it in your brain like water in a mop, and do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books. Habakkuk, Zephaniah, hey guys, Zachariah, Malachi, come on. We've made it through the old, now let's move on to the new and see what we can find. Take a deep breath. <sighs> new Testament, here we go. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and Corinthians 1 and 2. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Thessalonians 1 and 2. First and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter and John. One, two, three. And don't forget, Jew, do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books, do the Bible book, ba, the Bible books. Gonna learn all the books from the bottom to the top. Soak it in your brain like water in a mop. If you learn this song, you'll impress your mom and pop. We had a lot of fun. I wish we didn't have to stop and do the Bible book, Bible book, ba. Revelation. Good job, guys. Good job. Hey, I'm going to get you to pause for just a second. I need to check on Bailey because I think she's getting into trouble. Give me just a second. Bailey, are you being a bad girl? friends I have good news and I have bad news Bailey is in trouble do any of you know how many cars are in a uno deck because she has exploded the box in the living room she's gonna be in so much trouble when I'm finished with chapel 
Oh my goodness. So, thanks for being patient. I'm so sorry that Bailey was a disruption this morning. Those sweet puppy dogs, they can sure get in trouble, can't they? Oh my goodness. Hey, Colleen and Juliana. Good morning. Thank you for being here. All right, so let's move right on. Hey, make sure you're popping up your prayer request, okay? Make sure you're popping those up for me. So let's move on to calendar, can we? So here's our calendar for today. I'm gonna to hold it so I think you can see it better. Is that okay? So we have days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, there's even Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. So let's see now. Yesterday was Sunday. Today is Monday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. That's right. Can we count our days? Let's count our days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. What was Saturday? What's next? Nineteen. Good. And that means yesterday, Sunday, was what's after 19? 20. That's right. Which means today then is, what's after 20? The 21st. Good job. So today is Monday, September 21st, 2020. And we only have like one more day in summertime and it'll be fall. How exciting. Don't you guys love this weather? Don't you just love this weather? It is my favorite time of the year. I've already told you that. And I have my fall decorations out. And I made like this apple cobbler last week. Oh, and just the snails and the feel outside. Oh, just love this time of the year. And I don't know how many of you came to um, our outdoor movie on Friday night and it's watching this morning. But it was super cool, like literally cool, because it was kind of chilly outside on Friday night. And um, <laughs> we watched Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And so we had the whole feel of winter going on with the movie. And the wind was blowing. Oh, it was a wonderful time, but it was really chilly. So it made that the winter scenes, you know, made them feel real. So great time. Love C.S. Lewis movies. And um, his books, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I just absolutely love Aslan and how he represents Jesus um, in that movie, how he gave his life for Edmund and everybody else. Just such a great movie. So I hope you've watched it. If you haven't, you need to read the books. Read the books and then watch the movie. Highly encourage that. Now, let's see. Carrie is here today. And Carrie decided she wanted to represent our military families. So she has on her camouflage today. You're mighty cute with your little ruffled camouflage there, Carrot. Isn't she cute? Huh? Yeah, she's a pretty cute bunny. So what do you think? Carrot, look out our window. Is it raining? No. The sun is shining, isn't it? Yeah. But it's still a little chilly, right? So you're going to need to put a little sweater on your arms if you go outside today. Yeah, maybe just a thin sweater. You don't need a big coat. It's not that cold, but... Might need a little sweater, especially this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you planning on going anywhere today? No, you're just going to hang out in the school room? Yeah, okay. Well, that's probably good. But if you do go out, make sure you get a sweater, okay? Yeah, all right. So, let's see here. Carrot, I'm going to have you hang right here. I need to move some things. I brought some things for us, and I put them right on top of our weather signs. Right wrong. Let me just pull these out without dumping everything on the floor. Here we go. Now, Carrot, tell me, my friend, do you think... Oh, goodness, guys, hang on. It's Monday, can you tell? All right, Carrot, do you think it's going to snow today? No, I don't think so either. How about, is it windy today? It is a little windy out, isn't it? It is, guys. It's a little windy at my house, a little breezy. Let's see. But it's not raining right now. You think it might rain later? 
Yeah, I don't know either. I didn't watch the weatherman this morning. Did you? No. But it might rain later, but it is not raining right now. It's actually quite beautiful outside, isn't it? The sun is shining, right, Carrot? And there may be a cloud or two, but is it storming? No. So, what do you think, Carrot? Mm hmm Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Carrot believes that there might be a possibility of a shower late today, right? But, but it's pretty sunny out. It's going to be a nice day. Maybe get outside and go for a walk after you get your schoolwork done. Good idea. Um, but maybe grab a thin jacket because it's a little breezy out, yeah? Good job. You're such a good weather rabbit. <laughs> Thank you, Carrot. All right, now you sit right there, all right, because we're going to move on to our colors and shapes because God made colors and shapes. Come on. Each one is different, you see. Come on. God made colors and shapes just like he made you and me. Now, one of my favorite things in this world is glitter. Can you see this glitter? What color is this glitter? Red. That's right. It's red. And what shape is the bottom of this bottle? Can you see it? Or the top? It's a circle. That's right. So red glitter, shape of the bottle is a circle. All right. Or at least a lid, I should say. Now, what color glitter is this? Isn't it so pretty? I love how glitter sparkles. Green. Good. Very good. And what is the shape of this lid? It is a circle. We will learn later this is a cylinder, the whole thing, but the ends make the shape of a circle. Great. I'm going to set my glitter right over here because we sure do not want it to fall. Whew, that would be a mess. Now, Colin and Juliana, you recognize this? This is what they used to paint at my house on Friday. They did a great job painting some beautiful pictures. I enjoyed my time with them so much. What color is this paint? Yellow. Good. What about this one? Green. Good job. I'm going to sit those right there. What about this one? What color is this? Red. And this one? Purple. Good job. You guys are so smart. What about this one? What color is this paint? Can you see that? Can you tell? It's white. That's right. White. This is white paint. And its lid is a circle also. Now, tell me, I brought this sleeve of watercolors, and it has lots of colors in it, but I brought it because I want you to tell me what shape is this? It's a rectangle, isn't it? Good job. That's a rectangle, and what shape is these, these plates? What shape are these plates? Circle, good. Now, what shape is this little notebook here that Julia has? This is Julia's little notebook. What shape do you think about when you see this? It's a rectangle. That's right. It's a rectangle. Good job. It's not a square because it's not the same on all four sides. So, what shape is my watch? It's a square. That's right. It's, it's a square. It's the same on all four sides. Now, let me see. <laughs> this is a square, right? If I turn it this way, what shape is that? Well, it makes the shape of a diamond, doesn't it? Look at that. A square, turn it sideways, it makes a diamond. Very interesting shapes. Very interesting. Here's some of our, uh -oh. here's some of our other ones. We had a diamond, yep, and this was our square. Good. All right. I love all the colors that God gives us to look at. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? It's quite, quite interesting how he makes the colors bounce off of the sun and we can see things. Mm. So what shape is this? Diamond. Diamond. Good. And let's see here. Oh, oh what shape is this one? Oval. Good job. Oval. Nice. And we already talked about square. There's the word square. You need to be able to see the word. Okay. And we 
talk about those. Okay, good job. That covers our colors and shapes. Now, can we just go ahead and pray right now? Everybody get your hands up. Come on. Good morning, Heather Lee. Good morning, sweet sister. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Here we go. One little, two little, three little fingers. Four little, five little, six little fingers. Seven little, eight little, nine little fingers. Ten little fingers folded in prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you that we have been able to get out of our beds and join together in chapel in our classroom this morning. Lord, I thank you so much for the sun shining and that breeze blowing, Lord. Oh, you're just so good to us. And Lord, thank you for those little birds that are out chirping this morning. And Lord, I just thank you so much for the many blessings that you give us. Lord, you, you're just so good to us and you, you want us to live abundantly. And Lord, I just I thank you for the way you always provide. Lord, I, um, today I want to lift up JB and Melissa. Lord, they are still struggling. You know all about it. So Lord, we just especially lift them up to you this morning. Lord, for all of those who serve our country in the military and their families, our police officers, Lord, and their families, our firemen and their families, our medical workers and their families, Lord, we just thank you so much for the way they serve us. And Lord, I pray for the leaders of our country. Lord, I just pray that they will seek you for wisdom and that they can show love for one another. And Lord, that is my prayer for all of my sweet friends here in our classroom today. Lord, that we will just love one another the way you have commanded us to do. Lord, it's okay to agree to disagree. You, you tell us that, that we're not always going to get along, but we still have to love one another. We need to confront the issues. We need to talk to our friends about maybe things they've done to offend us. And then we just need to love one another. And so, Lord, that is my prayer today, that we will love in a big way. We will love like you love. That we will let your love shine through us for those all around us. So, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we just ask that you be with us in our class time. It's in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, so let's see. We did colors and shapes. We did weather. We did calendar. We prayed. Uh, it's time for Bible time. It's Bible time. It's Bible time in our class. They're singing and laughing. Let's get the word around. Folks are all excited and we are all delighted. It's Bible time, Bible time, Bible time, Bible time, Bible time in our town. What time is it? Bible time. I tried to change it to class, but that doesn't rhyme, so we can't use that word. Um, but it is Bible time. So I want you to grab your Bibles because I'm going to need you to look at them today. Can you get your Bibles? Get them. Scurry. Go and get your Bibles. And you may want to get a little card or something that you can mark in your Bible with. Um, a bookmark. Or maybe your Bible has a ribbon in it where you can mark where we're reading today. And where our memory verse is. Because I have a verse for you to memorize this week. Well, good morning, Mr. Ken. I didn't think y'all were going to make it this morning. Good morning. I'm so glad y'all are here. So glad y'all are here. All right, so turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 1. Um, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, New Testament, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and Corinthians 1 and 2. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Oh, there's Philippians. I went too far. Galatians. It hides in there right between Galatians and Philippians. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Ephesians. And you're going to chapter 6. So big number 6, tiny verse number 1. I want you to get there because I want to let's read this together, okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. This is what mine looks like. So see on my page right here? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. With me? Okay, here we go. Children. Children? Speaking to you children. Now is it speaking to just little children? Could be. 
But if we're followers of Christ, we're all children of God, right? So children, listen up. Obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Let's go ahead to verse number two. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, that you may have a long life in the land. Mm. Listen to this. Fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, so it tells right here that daddies are supposed to train up children with the instruction of the Lord. Hmm. And mamas are to help them, right? And so, honor your father and your mother. So here is our verse for this week. Our memory verse is just verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Now, you might have a different translation. I am using the um, Christian Standard Bible this morning. Um, this is my kid's Bible, and that's the translation I have. If your parents choose for you to memorize a different translation, that is okay. It's saying the same thing, just with different words. Obey your parents. The Lord said so, because it is right. Obey your parents. So, today our story is going to be about obedience. Not just little kid obedience, but big people obedience. Our story today comes from Genesis chapter 21. So we're going to go back to the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis is the first book. And if you'll look at Genesis chapter 21, it's actually going to start with 21, and it's going to go through uh, some of chapter 22. Obedience. Obedience to God is what we're talking about. All right, so if you will... Let me put up uh, some greenery. Oh, we need some more trees going on. Let's put this one over here. Yep, there's some little bushes way off yonder. See those? Here's a big, I thought this one was pretty because it has pink flowers on it. And this one can go back here, kind of make us a little forest. All right, let me put that one there. <clears throat> so, listen with your listening ears. Turn on your listening ears and listen to this story. Look at our beautiful baby, said Sarah. Abraham looked at the child God had given them, and he said, I still cannot believe that God has given us this baby, Sarah. He is truly a miracle child. Because remember, they were old. They were so old. Huh. They were like older than grandma and grandparent old. Like they were really old. I don't know of anyone else who is a hundred years old and has a teeny tiny baby. Well, do you know anybody that's a hundred and has a teeny tiny baby? Well, Lord, I don't. I don't know anybody that old that has a teeny tiny baby. Um, I didn't believe God at first, but now I know God can do anything, said Sarah. Wow, listen to that. I'm so happy, and I want to share the good news of our baby with all of my friends. We will call him Isaac, said Abraham. That name means laughter. So we got Abraham, and we got Sarah, and now they have a baby named Isaac. Good job, Isaac. Abraham loved God more than anyone else in the whole world. But would he still love God if his only son Isaac was taken away? Hmm. God decided to test Abraham's faith and see if he really trusted God enough to obey him. So, one day, Isaac wasn't a bitty baby anymore. He, he, was a, he was a little bit older. And God called out to Abraham and he said, Yes, Lord. God said to Abraham a very strange thing. Very strange. Take with you your only son you love so much and go to Moriah. There on one of the mountains, I want you to sacrifice your son as a burnt offering. What? Abraham sacrificed his son? What in the world? Abraham couldn't believe what God was asking him. Offer up his only son? 
Only the heathen people of the world would sacrifice their children that worshipped idols. This was not what God was about. Abraham knew God hated when people did things like that. What was God thinking? But Abraham knew. You see that God never makes mistakes. Never. He trusted God completely and knew to obey God. The, the obeying God was exactly what he needed to do. Even though it was the hardest thing he could imagine. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, let's see here. Here's Abraham. There he is. And here's Isaac. So see, he's not a little teeny baby anymore. Can y'all see that? Can you see? And then, let's put the donkeys here. And they're going to carry some wood for us. See that wood on their back? Can y'all see that? And then here are the servants, because, well, you need to take servants. Okay, so y'all got that? Everybody see? I'm going to stand to the side so you can see better. So the next morning, Abraham got up early and he chopped some wood. Here's our wood. Um, he chopped it for the altar and he put it on the donkey's back for them to carry. And he took his son Isaac and two young men who were servants. And they started to the place where God had told them to go. And, oh, it was a long way. And it took them like three days to get there. And can you imagine what he was thinking all that time? Oh, and then when they got there, he said, you guys stay here with the donkey. You stay here with the donkey, and my son and I are going to go and worship God. So they stayed behind. They took the wood. Okay. Okay. Here's the altar. And Abraham placed the wood on the altar to offer up his burnt offering. <clears throat> now all along the way to get there, Isaac walked happily beside his father. Then he said, Father, you have a knife and I have the wood, but where's the lamb? What are we going to sacrifice? Abraham was so shaken. But showing faith, he answered, God will provide a lamb himself. They walked on together until they reached the place God had told Abraham about. And slowly, Abraham built the altar and he arranged the wood. And now there were no more preparations to make. Abraham could not put it off any longer like he had done everything he could as slow as he could because he was dreading this moment. But he knew he had to obey God, no matter how difficult it might be. Tearfully, Abraham explained what God had requested. And then he took Isaac and he bound him and he, he put him on the altar. Isaac did not try to resist. And you know why? Because he knew he was to obey his father as well. He knew that he had to not only be obedient to his earthly father, but he had been taught and he knew that he had to be obedient to God. So if this was what God was saying, well, it was what had to happen. Just as Abraham was ready to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, listen to what happened. An angel cried out, Stop! Don't hurt the boy. Don't do anything to him. Now God knows you love him more than even your only son, Abraham. Oh, can you imagine the relief Abraham had? And then, look right over here. There he saw him. There, in the thicket, in the brush. It was a ram that he could offer as a sacrifice. 
Because you have obeyed God, the angel said, he will do wonderful things for you. You will have many children and many grandchildren and many great-grandchildren who will love and obey God. Look at the sand on the ground, said the angel. Remember all the stars in the sky? Abraham said, you know, I can't even count them. She, the angel said, that's how many children God will give you. He won't allow your enemies to conquer you, and people will be blessed throughout the world because of you, Abraham. Abraham said, I, I just don't deserve all of this. Why? Why is God doing this for me? And the angel said, he's doing this because you obeyed him. To obey God, well, it is not always easy. In fact, sometimes it's pretty, pretty tough. But it always pays in the end. You see, God was testing Abraham. God did not want to physically harm Isaac. God doesn't want to hurt us. He just wanted Abraham to be willing to give up his son, just as God the Father gave up his son for us. See, God knew all about how that giving up your son felt, because that's what he was going to have to do. And so Isaac was able to come down off of the altar, and they loved one another and praised God for providing the sacrifice that they needed. What a great, great example of obedience to earthly fathers and to heavenly fathers. Great example. I love how God shows up right in the last minute. Right when, Karen, I'm sorry, baby. Right when Abraham thought, I'm going to have to give my son. In the very minute when it was about to happen, God showed up. And that is so how he works sometimes. He wants us to trust him so much. And then he shows up. So, you know, sometimes we doubt, where is God? Me and my teenage girls talked about this in our small group last night. Sometimes we wonder, especially with all the craziness in our world right now, where is God? Where is God? God is everywhere. And God is at work. And God is going to show up right in the perfect timing. Just like our story today showed us. So, obey your mother and your father. Obey, obey, obey. Wait. Wait on God's timing, because it is perfect. Trust that he has a plan. Did he have a plan? And then obey. Obey what he tells you to do. Even when it's tough. Even when you think it might be the hardest thing ever. God's going to show up. And God knew exactly what was going to happen. He just wanted Abraham to, to prove to him he loved him so much, he would give his son. You know, Corey Ten Boom, mm, love reading Corey Ten, Corey Ten Boom's books. And one of the things um, that she had said is, don't ever hold on to anything so tight that God has to pry your fingers off of it, because he will. What is she saying? We should not love anything more than God. Moms and dads, not even our own children. We have to love God more than anybody else. And that's, that's difficult, isn't it? Because we have these sweet babies and we love them so much. And I'm not saying, boys and girls, I'm not saying that our parents don't love us because they do. Our parents love us so, so much. And it's almost a different kind of love from, between a parent and a child. But, but God has to be first in everybody's lives. Children. You are to love God first more than you can love your mom and dad because it's a special relationship that we have with God and we are to love him first. We love because he loved us first. Think about this for a minute. If God didn't love us, well, we wouldn't be able to love our moms and dads. Mom and dads, if God didn't love us first, we wouldn't know about love for our children. So his love is first. Love him more than anybody else. Be willing to obey him at all cost. 
And remember that phrase. Don't hold on to anything so tight that God has to pry your fingers off. Because he will. If we, if we put things before him and more important than him, it's not going to go well. Just not. He has to be first. Great lesson today. Great lesson today. All right, so we're going to move on into our uh, elementary age school time. So if my sweet friends that are not in school yet are getting restless, Mom, this is the time for they can go have breakfast or maybe go color something while the older kids are having this lesson time. So we're going to move right on into our geography today. Now, of course, my sweet young friends are welcome to stay because they will learn things. Um, but if they're getting antsy, you can have them um, go and do something else. Now, older kids, grown folks, I want you to stand up and let's stretch because you've been sitting and listening, you've been processing the story of Abraham and Isaac. So I want you to reach to the sky. Come on, see if you can reach up to those stars. I know you can't reach them, but try. Reach, reach, reach. Good. And to the right. Oh, good. And to the left. Good. And down to the ground. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And back up to the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And to the right. Good. And to the left. Good. Now pull this arm across. Stretch that back. Oh, that feels good. And that arm, that shoulder. Stretch this one. Good. Very good. It's a nice day for a walk. I'm going to try to go for me a walk this afternoon. I'm going to try to get back on my walking schedule today. All right. So now, have a seat. Turn on your listening ears. We're going to learn five more U.S. states and capitals today. Now, you know how up to this point we started up here, right? Started up here and we worked all the way down here. Well, now we're going to come up here to Lansing, Michigan. Okay? So we got Lansing, Michigan, Columbus, Ohio. Is there a glare? Can y'all see this? Columbus, Ohio. We have Indianapolis, Indiana, Frankfort, Connecticut, and Nashville, Tennessee. So see, we did these, and now we're starting up here, and we're coming down, we're gonna do these. So now we have 20 states and capitals that we're learning. Have you guys made your flashcards? Oh, I hope so. I hope you're using your flashcards, and I hope you're tracing your maps. If you haven't traced your maps, if you don't have a way to do that, let me know. I will send you a laminated map so you can trace them. So here are our five for this week. Let's say them together. Lansing, Michigan, Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, Frankfort, Connecticut, and Nashville, Tennessee. That's our five new states and capitals for this week. So get to work on those. Get your flashcards made. Start working on them. Um, because I told you by the end of the school year, you're like, you're going to be able to draw the whole United States. It's going to be so cool. Now, Let's see. Let's go to math. Can we go to math? Today, I wanted to talk to you about fractions in math. So what do you see? This is a circle, and it's one whole circle, right? But if I draw a line, then I have one circle cut in half, so I have two circles. A half and a half put together makes a what? A whole. That's right. Let's look at it this way. Look at these things. So here we have a square, one whole square, right? But if we cut it in half, we have one half and we have one half put together makes one whole. Same thing with a circle. If we draw a line down the middle, that's what we just did in our other picture. A half and a half makes a whole. Triangle, cut it in half. We have two half triangles. And um, two makes a whole. Rectangle, cut it in half. So then I have two, half, two rectangles half the size of what that whole rectangle was. Half of the size still has the rectangle shape, but it's a half and a half that makes this whole rectangle. Now look at these things that you like to eat. We have a cheeseburger. If we have one whole cheeseburger and we cut it in half, we have two halves, right? A half and a half, but it's still, it put together would make a whole cheeseburger. 
We have an apple, cut it in half. Here's a half and here's a half. Pizza, cut it in half. We have a half and a half. Muffin, cut it in half. Here's a half and here's a half, but it together makes a whole. Cheese, half, half, makes a whole. All right, so there's some shapes in um, things that we eat. And that shows us how we can cut things in half. So, let's see here. When we write the fraction half, this is what it would look like. This is one half, okay? And if I have one half plus one half, that equals one whole. So, half, half, together equals one. Are you with me? Can you see? Can you guys see? Do I need to tilt the camera some? Let's see. Is that better? So, oh, hold on a second. That's why it wouldn't move. It was hung. All right. So now do you see? This half plus this half makes one whole circle. See? If we take a hole and we cut it in half, we have a half and a half. You following me? Okay. How about this is one whole triangle, right? I cut it in half. Here's one half. And here's one half. This is another way you may see fr fractions written. You may see it on a slant. Okay? But two halves make a whole. Does that make sense for you? Okay. So that's the math I want to introduce to you today. Is a whole and two halves. Okay? Fractions. That's the first fraction we're going to work with this week. Now, let's review our clock. We need to make sure we're getting this telling time down pat because it is so important in your day-to-day -day life. We're going to do more practice with fractions. I just wanted to introduce it today. So, what time is this? Our hand is on the 10, that's right, and the long hand, the minute hand is on the 12, so that means o'clock. Right? So 10 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Good. Good job. What about this one? Where's the hour hand? 11 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Now, let's talk a little bit about military time. Some of you live in military homes and your parents, or even medical, um, medical people use a lot of the 24-hour clock. Military time is what I call it. So, the first time it goes around in the morning, that's a.m., you would say 0100, 0200, 0300, because this is on the zero, zero, okay? 12 o'clock is like this, the colon in two zeros, 7 o'clock. See that? So, this will be 700 hours. Now, when it goes around all the way to the 12 and it starts over again in the p.m., then this becomes... 1300 because when we when we add to 12 we add 1 to 12 13 we add 2 to 12 that's 1400 okay so that is why you hear some people call it 1400 or 1430 or 1425 or 1420 that would mean 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 220 in the afternoon so it can get a little bit confusing unless you're used to it um, but I did want to tell you about that because I know that you hear that in some of your families.
but let's just stick with the basics for right now, okay? So, what time would this be? One o'clock. And it could be a.m. or p.m., so it's important for you to know that. It's important for you to, if someone said, if you asked, what time is it in your country? Well, let's see, right now in Myanmar, it is 8.54, but it's 8.54 p.m. because they're ahead of us in time, almost 10 hours right now, almost 11 hours. So it is 8.54, where right here, where we are, it's 9.54. So yeah, so they're um, 11 hours ahead of us. It's p.m. there already because they're on the other side of the globe, right? And the globe is spinning. The globe is spinning. Sun here, moon here. So while the sun is shining here, it's dark and it's nighttime over there because they're on the other side. So um, now it's 8.55 in the evening there. It's 9.55 in the morning here. So it's important to know a.m. or p.m. because if you didn't know that and they said, oh, it's 8.55, or, and you called them, well, they're already going to be in the bed. So it's important for us to know the time zone and if it's a.m. or p.m. So, all right, let's see. What time is this? Three o'clock. Good. What time is this? Three o'clock. Good. How about two o'clock? Good. How about this one? Nine o'clock. Our hand's on the nine, minute hand is on the 12, so that means o'clock, right? Good job. Now, remember, if it's here, 5, 10, you gotta count by your fives. 5, 10, so this is 9, 10. This would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, so it would be 9, 25. What would this be? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So it would be 9.45. And when it moved on around, what time is it now? Shorthand is on the 10. Longhand is on the 12. 10 o'clock. Very good. So that is our review of time today. Now, I'm going to just quickly introduce our science, and we'll talk about it more throughout the rest of this week because I am not going to keep you past an hour, I promise. So... Our science focus this week is going to be the five senses. Taste, touch, can you see those? Hear, smell, see. Hearing, tasting, sight, seeing, smell, touch. That's our five senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. Those are our five senses. So we're going to just dive into that and learn more about them this week. Um, so tomorrow we will introduce our English for this week um, and spend a little bit of time in that and our history. So um, what a great start to the week. So much to learn this week. I love you guys. I will be right back here on Facebook Live tomorrow morning in our classroom, and I look forward to seeing you. Let me see those kissing hands. Come on, kissing hands. I love you guys. Bye.